Hello and welcome to AR and AR. I'm Adam Rose and today I'm going to be looking at how to create a bike tow and how to use a bike tow. Pretty essential pieces of kit, especially in longer expedition races. Okay, so this is what we have. Um, there are many ways to create a bike tow. Uh, in the past, people used to use pieces of plastic tubing, which had strap onto the bike frame, zip tied onto the bike frame. They'd use surgical tubing to create stretchy uh, tow ropes and things. Nowadays, it's really, really simple. What I'd recommend is you just go for something like this, which is a dog lead, an extending dog lead. You just modify it so it works well for racing. Attach it to your bike. You can have this done in five minutes. Okay, so what we have here, it's a cheap dog lead. It doesn't have to be very expensive or very strong because you're not really pulling people with great force, just helping them along. So that cost a few pounds, a few dollars. I've got some uh, zip ties. I've got three here. You know, two is enough, but you know, three is better than two just in case one of them gets broken or something. And then a pair of scissors and some plastic tubing. Now, it could be any sort of comfortable tubing for you to hold on to. It could even be a piece of old hose pipe if you really want to use that. Um, but I'm just going to cut off a piece with the scissors and that'll form the basis of the uh, tow rope. Okay, now in terms of how long you want the dog lead to be, in my experience, two meters is pretty much right. Um, you'll usually get them longer than two meters, just cut them down to the right size. Uh, you could have it five meters long if you really wanted to, but it's not really going to help as efficiently as something that's two meters long. You don't want to be too close to the back tire of the person who's towing you, but you don't want to be too far back because then you lose the benefits of drafting behind the person who's towing you along. So in my experience, two meters, just about right. So I've already marked that here on this cord. Um, and I'll just make a loop, you know, so it's two meters up to that point, And then the, you've got to take into consideration the width of the plastic tubing itself. So don't cut it at exactly two meters. Give yourself some leeway to form the loop as well into which you're going to put the plastic tube. So I'll just cut off the end right now. Just give myself some leeway here. Okay. Okay, so now that I've cut the, the end of the dog lead, what I recommend doing is just tying a simple little knot further along. It doesn't have to be um, anything complicated, just so that in case you let go the dog lead cord or it slips or something, it doesn't go back inside here because that's pretty hard to get it back out again. You have to take the whole thing apart, unscrew it. Now, in terms of the actual piece of tubing that you're going to use, you don't want it to be just the width of your hand because then when the cord's pulling, it's going to maybe cut into the sides of my hand a little bit. Again, there's not a huge amount of stress, but you know, just leave a little bit more. So take just over a hand's width and then cut the tubing roughly there. So, okay. And you can use anything for plastic tubing. You can even use an old water bladder, you know, just take that piece of tubing. That's a really uh, nice uh, quality of tube. So there I've got the, the bit that I need. I'll first, in my case, what I like to do is do a, a simple figure of eight. So I've got a figure of eight. Then put it through the plastic tube. So it's going to form the handle. And then thread it back through that figure of eight. Make sure you've got a comfortable amount of space to form a good loop. Okay, so there's the uh, not completed, re-threaded figure of eight. Uh, the handle does move around a little bit. That doesn't really matter at all. It's actually a benefit because it's not fixed in one particular position. And I've undone the knot that I was using to prevent the slipping back inside itself while I was assembling it. I just let go. It's going to hang like that from the back of the bike. All I've got to do is attach it to the bike itself. Okay, so when you attach it to the saddle, you're attaching it to the rails underneath the saddle or you're attaching it to the seat post itself. Um, some people put it horizontally like this. Some people put it vertically, attaching it like that with zip ties. Uh, the main thing you want to ensure is that when you pull the dog lead, that it lies directly above the tire. Okay, what you don't want is this off to the side like this. Obviously, that's, that's going to be pulling the bike off axis. So make sure it's lined up with the rear wheel. Another thing to consider is you've got some sort of bike bag that's going to fit over here. You just have to attach this to the bike bag because obviously you wouldn't be able to attach it to the saddle directly. So there it's hanging freely. Just zip tie it whatever way works. So I'll do it loosely initially, including the rails from the saddle itself.
and then I want to do a third one just for strength like I said before because I don't want to rely on just two of these things okay and that's hanging above the rear wheel straight line so just gonna cut these off and there it is okay so we've got it set up now on the saddle all ready to go so I'm gonna demonstrate just how the logic works so I've got somebody here who's gonna come up and use a tow rope so the point is imagine I'm riding the bike and then the person I want to tow they ride up alongside me so we're on the move grabs it with one hand and then as the slack gets taken up imagine I'm moving forward so right you can see it's, it, it's working quite well um, the person who's being towed I find it's quite a good idea if I'm being towed um, if my hands are you know obviously on the handlebars and the grips normally with the hand that's holding the tow rope I'll move that hand towards the center so that the pull is along the center above the wheel I don't want it you know to be holding the tow rope with one hand on the right hand side or left hand side because then as it pulls it'll just uh, affect my steering so I personally tend to hold uh, the hand with the tow rope more towards the center of the bike um, and obviously this is not on difficult terrain it's up a hill it's on a fire road it's kind of easy terrain that's why you're using the tow rope so right now when I'm, the person at the back is finished being towed they just let go and it goes straight back underneath the saddle ready to go the next time now we'll demonstrate how you actually do this in practice got it okay Okay, so there you saw how to create a tow rope, how to attach it to a bike, and you even saw it in operation. Um, now, there's a few other things just to mention. In using a tow rope, one of the most important things to remember is communication. So the person in front needs to communicate with the person in the back and vice versa. The person in front can see the path that's coming up ahead. The person in the back is blind pretty much. They tucked up behind the wheel. So the person in front, it's really important that they say to the person in the back, Look out, there's a ditch coming up, look out, there's a bump, there's a step, there's a puddle, so that the person in the back is informed. Also, it's important that the person in front tells the person in the back, listen, I'm slowing down, I'm slowing down, let go, let go. Because what you don't want to be doing if you're towing somebody is for you to slam on brakes because of an emergency and the person in the back just plows into the back of you. Obviously, that's not a good idea. And then from the person being towed, they need to keep the person in front, listen, I'm letting go, or I've got it, I'm fine. So, or there's any sort of issue, the person in the back also needs to keep the person up front up to date. In using a tow rope also, the, the kinds of terrain you're going to be using it on, pretty much on flat terrain or on uphills. Of course, there's no point in using it downhill. In fact, it would be downright dangerous to use it on a downhill. And you want to be using it on broad open tracks. So whether it's tarmac or gravel roads, fire roads, those kind of things are great because the person being towed, if necessary, can dart around the left or the right if something happens to the person in the front. What you don't want to be doing is using one of these uh, on single track or technical terrain. It's really not designed for that kind of thing. You might use it with a dropper post if you are going to race with a dropper post. You don't tend to use a dropper post much in uh, adventure racing because the terrain doesn't tend to be that technical. Um, and also some people, a lot of people nowadays, tend to put bike bags underneath the, the seat and that would get it in the way of dropper posts going up and down. Of course, you know, you'd have to take the bike bag off. So yeah, you can use this with a dropper post. And some people might be worried that it might damage the dropper post. No, because you shouldn't be putting a lot of strain on the tow rope. This is not an excuse for the person at the back to not pedal. They should be pedaling, just like the person in the front. And the person at the front shouldn't be, you know, oh, straining and straining. Essentially, the person at the back should be feeling the benefit fairly similar to using an e-bike. That it's that little bit extra to give them enough energy to uh, go that little bit faster. And ultimately what happens here is the overall speed of the team, the average speed of the team is raised because you don't get anybody being left behind. So as a rule of thumb, if somebody else in your team comes up to you and says, hey, take the tow rope, do you want the tow rope? They're not, being, they're not really saying, do you want it? They're saying, please take it, even if they're being very polite about it. Um, if you offer the tow rope, take it so that everybody is that much faster altogether. All right, hopefully that was useful. Um, let me know in the comments what you thought and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.